Now corporate takeover. We call it World War One. So the corporation called United States was able to overthrow the existing corporate order in Europe, but it cost a lot of money. They had to build a lot of tanks and jeeps and pay a lot of people, and the corporation, well, they were successful. They did what they wanted to do, but they went broke doing it. And so when they went broke doing it, and then the bankers pulled their money out in 29, um, we had something called a stock market crash because they, they, the corporation spent so much money, they went broke. So the international banker says, well, if you're broke, what are you coming to me for? I'm not going to loan you money if you feel if you're broke. And so what do you have as collateral? Do you got any collateral uh, that you could put up uh, for me to loan you the money? And the corporation called United States, the British corporation called United States, said, yes, we have the, the stock. We'll give you stock in the company. You are the stock in the corporation. So they give your body, your body, to the banks in, in, uh, in uh, Switzerland. So your body now becomes stock for the corporation called United States because you are a money maker. Bankers <coughs> came in and said, if we're going to loan you money, you guys have lost money. You guys have gone bankrupt. We're going to take care of the accounting. We're going to see where the money goes. We'll, we'll give you the money, but we're going to make it sure it goes where we want it to go. So they set up the Federal Reserve System and then the collection agency to make damn sure that you people pay us. We're going to set up to keep a, a, a record of how much you owe us in business each week. We're going to call that the Federal Reserve. And to make sure that your stock, all the chumps out there in America working, make sure the stock pays us. We're going to make sure they pay us. You don't just tell me you're going to pay. I'm going to make sure they're going to pay. So we will set up a collection agency. Our own personal collection agency is called the Eternal Revenue. You mess with us, Jack, and we're going to hurt your face. You owe us money. So the banks loan money to the privately owned corporation called United States, and the United States Corporation gave your body, your birth certificate, to the banks as collateral for the loan. And that's why today Americans are nothing but slaves. Now this is something I want you to understand. And you need to listen carefully because this is profoundly important. Most people have never heard this and, I, and, and don't even understand what I'm trying to say. But try and follow what I'm going to tell you. There are two kinds of law on the earth, as I've said. One is called civil law, which is the law of the land. And one is called maritime admiralty, which is called the law of water. Uh, the Maritime Admiralty is banking law. And the law on the Maritime Admiralty says that you, because you came out of your mother's water, are a Maritime Admiralty product. This is why the ship is sitting in its berth and it's tied to the dock and the captain has to give a certificate of manifest to the port authorities because money is changing hands. This is why when you were born, you have to have a birth certificate. It's got to be signed by the dock, because that's where the ship is tied to, is the dock. So the dock signs your birth certificate. Why? Because you came down out of your mother's water. You came down her birth canal. You are a maritime admiralty product. And therefore, your birth certificate is signed by your mother. And where your mother signed on the birth certificate, get it, you will see it does not say parent or mother. It says informant. Your mother was informing the, the, the bank that she has just produced another product to be bought and sold. England. The British Crown, through international banking, owns your physical body. And that's the law. But you can think it's funny all you want. 
So the bottom line is, is that you are a maritime admiralty product, and therefore the banks own your body. And on the back of the Social Security card will be numbers in red. On the front will be in blue or black, but on the back will be in red. The numbers on the back of a Social Security card in red designate your body. It is the serial number of your stock. And this is why if you're wealthy, you are, you are preferred stock. If you're poor, you are common stock. But you are a stock on the stock market. Your body is bought and sold through the use of your birth certificate. And if you could get your original birth certificate back, you would find that on the back of the birth certificate are all the banks around the world. All over the world, banks have used your birth certificate because you are a stock in a maritime admiralty banking scheme where you make money for banks. So consequently the corporation and government and people who want to control you, they create a second you and that second you that they control, that they created, is all capital letters. Check it out. Anytime you get a bill, get a lawsuit, you get a fine, a ticket. Somebody sends you a bill from the Department of Water and Power. Check it out on your driver's license, on your Social Security card, on your insurance card. Anything, period. Anything having to do with business, your name will always be in all capital letters because only all capital letters can be dealt with by banks and government. Anytime you have a name upper or lower case that, that applies to you, I got no control over you. You sign a contract in which your name is on all capital letters, now I can take you to court. Now I can take you. As a matter of fact, the judge sits on the bench. He rules from the bench. The word bench in Latin is a bank. Look it up in a Latin dictionary. So the judge rules from the bench. Right, because he's ruling for the bank. Why? Because somebody's going to pay. It's just a game here. The queen. The Queen of England wants a cut uh, of the American blood. She wants a piece. So it's go, you know, somebody's going to pay, and the money's going to go where? Into a bank. That's right. The judge rules for the bank. So consequently, if you are working in California making money, you are then referred to as a franchisee. You're a franchisee of a foreign corporation. 1849 Constitution of California. 1849 Constitution of California says no California citizen will ever pay taxes in California state. Ever. There will, ever, there will never be a state tax in California. Ever. That's the Constitution of California. But if you say that you're a United States citizen, you're saying you're a privately you work for a privately owned corporation called United States. Therefore, you are a franchisee of a foreign corporation. Therefore, you must pay the California Franchise Tax Board. Not California State Tax Board. There is no state uh, uh, tax in California. You pay the California Franchise Tax Board because you're a franchisee of a foreign corporation on the maritime banking law, international law. You work for the Queen of England. Your butt is owned by the Queen of England in a corporation called United States, while a man called Bush is the president of the British corporation. You want to talk treason? You need to wake up find out how this stuff really works. Because once you understand that you don't need to submit yourself as an American to a British commercial venture called courts. You're an American. You don't need to go to court. That's somebody, you only go to court because you agree to go to court. When they send you a subpoena to court or summons to court and they've sent you something, you look at it and say, hey, Jack, that's not me. That's an all capital letters. All capital letters is a corporation. It's a corpse. It's dead. Do I look like I'm dead to you? No, I'm an American, Jack. I ain't dead. 
And besides, I'll go to an American system for justice. I don't need no British Grand Lodge Masonic system called courts. This British Grand Lodge Freemasonic system called Inns of Court comes out of England. And it has manipulated, exploited, and lied to the people. And everybody in America thinks they got to go to court. Oh, the judge is, uh, they've sent me something that I've got to go to court. I don't go to anybody's court. I'm an American. I don't need to go to court. That's the difference between being a free man and a slave. Very few Americans have ever really thought about the fact who was the enemy of this country when it was being founded. Who was it George Washington was at war with? Bloodshed on the field of battle. Who were the Americans fighting and dying on the field of battle, fighting to found this country? No, as a matter of fact, the Russians were our supporters. The French, no. The French were supporting us. They loved us. They thought it was a great idea, somebody actually standing up for their rights and becoming a free people. And the French said, hey, that's sensational. Matter of fact, we'll come over and help you if you want. Anybody that fights against that bunch of, uh, of cutthroat murderers, British royalty, will help. Even the, the Tsar of Russia said, hey, you guys going to revolt against England? Hey, about time, somebody will come help you. And so Russia helped the uh, Americans. Uh, French helped the Americans. All over the world, people say, hey, it's about time you guys uh, got out. I, I love it. See somebody stand up for their own rights and take their country and become a free people. Your enemy, when you founded this country, was England, British royalty. And the Americans stood up on the field of battle and whipped the King of England's ass and sent the, uh, Eng the British back with their asses bleeding all over the world, wealthy people, potentates, uh, kings, rulers, princes, all the powerful people in the world, all over the earth, were watching. And they say, hey, we heard the King of England got his ass kicked last week <laughs> by a little group of uh, people called Americans. Well, they chased your ass out of town, didn't they? <laughs> and consequently, the King of England became the laughing stock of the world. It was like, hey, boy, he's got all the big army and the red coats and their, their guns and everything. That little bunch of Americans, they kicked your ass and sent you back crawling on your knees. What you going to do about that? You going to let him get away with that? And so the, the king realized he could not. They beat you on the field of battle, and they're mad. If you come back, they're going to kill you again. And so the King of England and the British royalty decided, no, no, we're not going to send any more people over there because you're not going to win. Those people are crazy. they got guns, and they're mad. Leave it alone. Just leave it alone. Later on, we will uh, we'll dream up some uh, things called uh, uh, United States uh, government, and we'll incorporate it. And we will bring in what we call, let's say, call them attorneys and lawyers. And then we'll do business and sign contracts, and, and we'll be their friends. And one day, we're going to own them. The British invasion. They call the rock groups that came out of England the British invasion. That's not the only thing Britain invaded with. They invaded with treason, bloodshed, lies, deception. They've given us courts. They've made you into a corporation. They've made you so that you are politically dead. You walk into a courtroom, and the judge wears a black robe. Black is the color of death. I mean, you've got Dracula wears a black robe. Frankenstein wears black. You know, always the, bl the, 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 the jailer, the guy who's going to cut your head off, wore the black robe. What is this black robe stuff of judges? Where does this black robe stuff come from? Somebody needs to do their homework and find out America has been raped. And the people who are running this country are nothing more 
than turncoats, they're traitors who have sold our great republic out. They've sold us out to our masters in England. I, for one, would like to see all British in this country, all British money, all British financing, all British corporations chased out of this country. Give them 72 hours to be out of this country, and you tell the Queen we're not sending over American boys into uh, the Middle East to save your goddamn oil. Tell the Queen no longer will Americans crawl on their knees to that woman, to the Queen of England. What a travesty. What a travesty in this country to watch America, the Great Republic, being raped by the British royalty. Somebody needs to do their homework. It's all business. I don't want you to take this personal. It's just business. This is the way banks work. This is the way courts work. This is the way government works. They manipulate and use words and terms and frighten you. I, for one, am not only not frightened, I'm tired of the lies and deception. I'd like to see America free again. That's my feeling. And thank you and good night.